Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gwinnett Business Radio alongside Stephen Julian. Mike Salmon here from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio in the beautiful Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. Uh, good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Mike. I miss award winning. You have news about award winning, don't you? We're not award winning, but. We are a finalist once again this year for the Gwinnett Chamber Small Business Award, Yay. which we won in 2019. Yeah, that's right. The award still sits on our table. We just don't bring it up every single show because we try to not be too braggy. Yeah, obnoxious, pretentious, braggadocious. Speaking of none of those things, I want to remind everybody that uh, Gwinnett Business Radio does come to you from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio. Love is what makes a Subaru a Subaru. Enjoy big savings and a hassle-free experience at Subaru of Gwinnett, where real people sell cars. Visit SubaruofGwinnett.com and join their family today, or come in and see the difference. If you're already a Subaruist, then check out their Facebook page and other social media pages for the latest news, offers, and community events. Well, Stephen, joining us today is uh, John Waldrop and uh, Wendy Cunningham. They're with Titan Electric Georgia, so they have taken over the show today. They are our only guests today. Titan Takeover. A Titan Takeover. Welcome to the program, John and Wendy. Great to see you guys. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Titan Electric Georgia. Uh, John, I'll ask you first because you are the founder and the president of the company. Wendy, you are the National Director of Marketing and VP. But uh, John, I'll direct this question to you. Tell us all about your company and what you guys do. We are a full-service electrical contractor. Uh, we do a lot of ground up projects, large commercial projects. Um, we have a service division to service the projects after the general construction is finished on the project. Um, we also have a low voltage division where we will go in and do all your low voltage cabling for teledata, uh, CATV, CCTV, security, and uh, audio visual. And um, we, we try to be a full service company to cover all aspects of electrical work here in, in the state of Georgia. This show is uh, being broadcast on a morning where power has gone out uh, around, around the state a lot. Uh, my wife and I were talking this morning and said, you don't, you don't really think about electricity until it goes out. It's just kind of one of those things we take for granted. Um, Wendy, uh, John gave a great answer as the president of the company. You're the national director of marketing. Um, how do you market an, a, an electrical company? What are some of the things that, uh, that you want to make sure people know? What, what are some of the messages that Titan Electric is, needs to tell the public that they should keep in the back of their mind and on a day like today certainly comes to the forefront of their mind? Basically, we want to be the person that they call um, when when they come in and there's no uh, power in their building. Uh, we typically work mostly in commercial office spaces and places like that. So when the building engineer comes in that morning and there's no power, I want my, the uh, service managers that we have on staff to be the first person that they call. And on top of that, you guys working with general contractors, you really want them to call you when they're planning the building because yes. you guys can help take mm -hmm. care of that, right? We do a lot of that. We do a lot of design build work, design assist work. Uh, we, we start on the front end of a, of a project like the building we're in today. Um, we will start six months to a year, if not longer, before the project even breaks ground helping the owners and developers and uh, the general contractors work through budgeting processes and getting the job within budget to, to get the job to be able to break that ground and, and move forward to help the economy. So the earlier the better, and, and you, do, you do a lot of work before people even see anything vertically rising from the ground. Generally a year to a year and a half out. Wow. Well, tell us how big the company is, and I also want to know about the history. How long has the company been around? Um, we will finish our third year in business in Georgia uh, right at about the 50 to 55 million dollar uh, annual revenue mark this year um, we're a little short of our goals due to obviously the, <laughs> yeah this wonderful pandemic we're all in today um, that has uh, slowed a lot of things down and slowed down a few money streams but things are starting to pick back up we're seeing in a lot of areas but Titan was founded and, and we started it the company of uh, uh, our corporate CEO and our corporate chairman, uh, Dan Neswald is our CEO, and Mike McInerney is our chairman and primary owner. And we, uh, they approached me in March of 2017, and we started having discussions about starting a company in Atlanta. Um, we have four other offices across the nation, um, and uh, 
we were able to come to agreement and get things working. I, I want to ask about the, 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 the name, not Titan Electric, but Titan Electric Georgia. Are there other Titan Electrics out there? Yes. Uh, affiliated with you or not affiliated with you? Uh, we are affiliated through similar ownership. Okay. Um, Titan Electric, uh, we are a large electrical contracting company in Chicago. Uh, Titan Electric Southeast is our Orlando and our Florida division, and they headquartered in Orlando and have a satellite office in Tampa. Um, and then Titan Electric Texas is uh, in Dallas, and, and that is our, those are our three other sister companies. I want to go back. You said now about three years you've been in business. Uh, Titan Electric Georgia. Titan Electric Georgia, $50 million plus. For Titan Electric Georgia. I mean, that sounds like very successful obviously sounds, it sounds like a titan company <laughs> yes i mean well, how have you been able to grow it so quickly and, and do so well so quickly I, I assume those are good numbers in your industry they, they are fairly good numbers in the industry okay. um but uh i've been in the industry in, in atlanta for 30 years um i started with a company in 1990 um right out of high school and i was lucky enough my mentor in in the business was half owner of uh, one of the largest electrical contractors in Atlanta at the time, and uh, he taught me the trade. And uh, so I've, I've been in the industry in Atlanta for a long time. Have a lot of established relationships with many of the general contractors uh, that we do business with today. So let me pivot. Let me switch a little bit. I, I'm going to ask you, and John, I think you said this at the very beginning. So e either of you guys can take this question, but. When it comes to your service department, um, you, you kind of laid out a lot of the things that you do, but I wanted to focus specifically on the service. You talked about general contractor, but um, what are some of the specific services that the service department at Titan Electric Georgia can offer that, that people need to know about? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Wendy answer that. Wendy uh, started our service department. When That'd she, be when a she great came, reason for her to yeah, answer it. When she you? came on board... Uh, uh, about this time three years ago uh she started the service department and uh has has built it up with with some wonderful team members that, that she and i've been able to bring on board together and they do a great job but i'll, I'll let her dis discuss that we have a team of uh i believe we're up to 14 uh service technicians that are seasoned electricians and when you want a service technician it's not just a your typical electrician um, it's somebody who can come in and assess the situation quickly and get the customer back up and running. So we offer 24-7 uh, emergency service. Again, we all of our customers, um, they know who their service manager is to call. And my goal for all of our customers is to get to that point so that when they come in and there's an issue that we are the first phone call that they make. That's our goal commercial and residential commercial commercial only okay perfect so that i want to make sure and make yes. that distinction yes commercial. so uh that's important for the people that run the whole buildings mm -hmm. you know large places small whatever the size commercial they've got their main contact mm -hmm. uh, no matter what's going on i like the 24 7 too that's good and as far as the, the work you do I, I want to make sure people out there understand you're you're not competing with the folks like jackson emc or, or georgia power you're no, we, you're more of the infrastructure we, we are the infrastructure of the building jackson's in we we take the power from the meter base out on the side of your house uh or on the side of a building or transformer for instance like the senesta building here um we go from the the power company transformer into the into the building I got gotcha. you. So, um, we've we've heard a little bit about your background, John Wendy. I'd like to find out a little bit about your background, how you got to where you are today, and ha how you ended up with Titan Electric, Georgia. I have had various uh, sales and marketing positions in different industries. From the I was a um, sales rep for automotive dealerships in Metro Atlanta. Uh, provided them with forms and promotional items, and even sold them vacuum cleaners that you can plug into your cigarette lighter back in the day when those were a thing and um and then got into the electrical business um this side of it five years ago and then um i knew john through the uh, buford community our children went to school together and when this opportunity came up he reached out to me to come join the team and it was a great day when i made that decision so um so i want to uh, talk about the service department a little bit more. John talked about having these relationships with general contractors, and that obviously is in the construction and design and being involved in that. But going back to the service department, how are you guys 
you know, you, you've been doing this now for a little bit. Mm -hmm. How are you finding new uh, clients? What are some of your targets that uh, that that you're still looking at or, or haven't even been able to really scratch the surface of that you guys obviously will scratch the surface because you are Titan Electric Georgia? Mm -hmm. Typically, we are. Uh, when I uh, first began, our t our uh, target market was uh, commercial office space. Um, we are members of uh, BOMA, which is Building Owners and Managers, um, and those are typically property managers and building engineers in commercial office spaces. Um, and over this year, we've had to kind of look for business in other areas because of the fact that a lot of those customers they're all working remotely and then their uh, tenants are not typically coming back so we've been looking at other um, avenues for that so uh, we've started to bridge the gap in between our new construction projects for at the end of, towards the end of the project uh, uh, project managers will put us in touch with the building owners or the, whoever's going to maintain those buildings the hotels and places like that um, we actually just met the uh, the uh, engineer for this hotel here and have are working on finalizing a uh, service agreement with them so that's wonderful mm -hmm. great our guests are john waldrop and uh wendy cunningham with titan electric georgia and you mentioned this building the Sonesta gwinnett place atlanta hotel uh funny story that's kind of how we met wendy mm -hmm. uh amanda who's producing the show today uh, i guess went back you guys were holding something back here in some of the uh, conference rooms what was going on that day we had our annual uh, employee benefits rollout lunch okay. that we do every year. I was impressed because not only uh, the number of people, but I could say I could see that wow, this is a company that takes care of their employees. And 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 Amanda wants me to mention that you guys had the varsity here. They brought the truck. <laughs> well, out. that's why you were impressed. Right, that you really, were impressed with the varsity. That really that's, impressed that's me. Yeah. Any company that will get varsity <laughs> yeah. for their folks is 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 a good. They company. know what they're doing. Any <laughs> company that does that for their employees, they know what they're doing. So I'd like to ask you a little bit more, and, and either of you can answer the. The question is, is about the culture of the company and what it's like to work for Titan Electric Georgia. We um, we employ right at about 150 employees right now uh, out of Titan Electric Georgia. Um, of that, there are 47 office employees, and the remaining 103 are field employees, uh, actual on-site building jobs or service techs on one of our 14 service vehicles that we have going around Atlanta all day. Um, but we, we, we try to offer and treat everybody like their family. Um, you know, sometimes family fights, but for the most part, we try to keep <laughs> it very calm and love each other. Um, but we, uh, we have an apprenticeship program uh, through the Independent Electrical Contractors here in Atlanta. And uh, through the IEC, we have a four-year apprenticeship program, and they – our, our, our guys get trained and and the, the same as any other organization in Atlanta that, that's doing training for for uh, for electrical apprenticeship and John you're someone who's been in the industry for 30 years mm -hmm. uh, you're someone that was mentored yourself by someone yeah. who showed you how to be involved and I know you didn't start in the office I know you started by learning the <laughs> trade right yes I so did. so I'm gonna ask you um, Where, where'd you get this inside information <laughs> <laughs> he said it. I pay attention, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I'm not thinking about the varsity. I'm, I'm thinking about... No, I'm just um, so I just wanted to ask you, as someone who is involved in a very vital trade uh, to, to the way we do life uh, in America, and even in the world, um, speak a little bit about the future of, of your industry. Speak a little bit about uh, what type of person... Uh, who might not think, oh, I can't do that. I, I don't know anything. T talk about kind of, I mean, it, this is something that can be taught. This is something that is absolutely vital because, as I said earlier in the interview, on a day like today, we're all like, I can't do anything without power. So we absolutely have to have this. And is is there a, are there people knocking down your door to get trained or are you guys always looking for good people to get into a good job and learn a good trade? We are always looking for good people. Yeah. Um, I serve on the board for the IEC also mm -hmm. and who we use for our apprenticeship program. And we and other IEC member companies, but we, we work very hard to get young people, young men and women into the trade. Um, you know, for many, many years it was preached to all of us, you have to go to college, you have to go to college, you have to go to college. Yep. Um, there are... <laughs> Very many people who are in the trades, whether it be electrician, 
HVAC tech, uh, you know, plumbing, welder, plumbers, mm-hmm. whatever, that are making a whole lot more than college graduates. Amen. Yes. Yes. Amen. And um, we, uh, our apprenticeship program is is good, and and we have set raises for our people, all of our employees that w- that are t- going through the program to become a, a journeyman electric electrician. Um, they they can make very good money. Mm-hmm. I'm an independent financial advisor. I'm not allowed to say the firm, otherwise compliance will jump down my throat. Some of my best young clients are people who've learned trades because right. they're getting paid very well. They have a skill a- a- that is absolutely necessary and isn't going away. Let's be honest, the general American public is getting worse and worse at fixing their own problems, especially around electrical. That is the one thing, even if you find someone who's really good at fixing things, will go, I don't touch electrical because that is super... Uh, complicated, important, and you don't want to mess around with that. You want to train, you know, you want the right person taking care of that, right? We, we try to train everybody, all of our employees to do it right, do it safe. We don't want anybody, our, our, our safety is one of our huge things we work, not, reach not and work whole, on every day. We, we want our employees yeah. when they come Amen. home, when they, when they get to work, we want them going home. That and, and, and Not it, a lot of room for error there. Right. No. And, and in a, and in a uh, company like uh, Titan Electric Georgia that is building a family and a culture, you said families fight. One of the reasons there might be some family fight is here's someone, your workers out in the field are very, very skilled, very, very well trained, and, and you got to keep them happy. You can't, you know, you, you got to listen to them, right? So you got to get through that fight so that you guys can keep moving forward together and create win, win, win all the way around. Right. When we try to have three or four things a year for our employees. Like when we saw y'all here yeah. that day, we were having our annual rollout and had several giveaways for our guys and, and, and our, our men and women that work for us in the field and in the office. And we, we you know, take try, care to, try to make everybody feel important because they are, and we want them to know that they are. So you're saying that the varsity wasn't even the best thing of the day. There might have been some <laughs> other great things. There were some other well. good yeah. things we're going not, on that day. I, we're not even part of the family, and, and Wendy made us feel like part of the family. I mean, she came back here and said, listen, you guys can go, please go help yourself. And we're like, no. really? And, and that was so. the highlight of our day. Uh, Wendy, I do want to ask you a question. I want to talk to John in a second about maybe some of your favorite projects that you guys have had in the past. But, but Wendy, when, when I think of the electrical industry, I'm thinking it's, it's a male dominated business i'd like to get your perspective as a female what it's like working in that industry and how you've been able to not only survive but thrive i would say probably because i grew up in a neighborhood of nothing but boys that's just (laughs) kind of i typically am able to to get along and just have uh, it's always been you know never been a problem and and you said you came out of kind of working in the automotive industry Mm -hmm. yeah maybe not and that's Mm -hmm. fairly male dominated as well so Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you know how to you know how to take care of yourself. And I grew up playing sports, <laughs> yeah. and don't most put up of with the any time, crap. most of the time, it was with a group of boys yeah. that I went to high school with or grew up with. So that's just typically what I'm used to. So then, let me jump on Mike's question and maybe add to it. Um, uh, you know, John said always looking for for good good people. Mm-hmm. What do you see as as some of the future roles that that women can continue to, you know, make their mark in in, in first with with Titan Electric Georgia and then you know even in the entire industry we have several ladies that are working in the field and going through the apprentice program and they get out there and they were right there with the guys um, you know all along the way some Um, of them are better employees yeah (laughs) truly Um, equal opportunity right you you can do any anyone can do any job in Mm -hmm. the company and find where they fit best right so they can succeed they do that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Well, let me go ahead and ask you, John, and, and, and you may have a favorite as well, Wendy, but is there a, a project that you've worked on in the past or maybe even one you're working on now that, that people will be familiar with? And, and then also, and, and this may or may not be the same answer, one that has been kind of your favorite for whatever reason. Um, that's, that's a tough question. I, I've been lucky enough in my career, you can drive down through the connector going through downtown and you can point out just about any high you're one of those guys and i've worked on a lot <laughs> of them. My, together, kids, going, my kids really go funny? dad we know you've worked that on building, that <laughs> I, we did that building um you're but, that guy but at, at titan electric uh, georgia we're probably two projects three projects we've recently completed that we're very proud of uh one is the reverb hard rock hotel Mm-hmm. that we did with Batch and Cook Construction, and it's right there beside Mercedes-Benz. It's got a huge video wall on the side of it. Mm-hmm. It's Atlanta's first hard rock uh, hotel-type enterprise. Uh, 
secondly, uh, Osprey, which is a large mixed uh, use living facility right off Howell Road. Mm -hmm. And then the 788 um, project, which we also do with Batson Cook, um, and it's a 23-story uh, high-rise condo job right there in that in that area uh, of that West Howell Mill kind of star metal area mm -hmm. over there where everything's yeah. getting re redone right now on the back side of Georgia Tech. Um, some other some great projects we're doing right now, one with Balfour Biddy, which is right on 14th Street in Spring, is uh, the Novel Project, and it's uh, – about a large, very large parking deck and then we have a residential tower going up on it and there's also an office tower going up on that job job site so, um so you guys have been busy it yes, seems sir. like you didn't have much of a slowdown no we haven't we, we, we've been very blessed and we, we, we honestly there's a new hotel coming up opening up in uh down in buckhead the the old sobu building the mm -hmm. sobu flats yep. building which is now going to be at the kipton hotel in atlanta and we're doing that with uh, Reeves Young Construction right now. So we're 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 very blessed in the relationships we have. They've they've really paid off in helping us get our company going, and, and we try to take care of our customers and their charities and everything else as well. But it it all is kind of a full life cycle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wendy, is there a project that stands out for you? I think the Fox Factory is probably one of yeah. my favorites as well. The Fox uh, Shocks mm -hmm. uh, new facility in uh, Oakwood. It's a large uh, distribution facility there. It's three hundred. It's a three hundred seventy-six thousand square foot factory. Yep. Um, Fox Shocks is a shock that people use on their trucks and high-performance trucks and bicycles and things of that nature. And they just relocated their factory from Bakersfield, California, to Oakwood, and we work with Carroll Daniel Construction Building. Uh, doing all the electrical work out there. Okay, wonderful. You mentioned all these projects around Metro Atlanta. You guys are, are based here, at least in, in Duluth, your office is in Duluth, Georgia. In fact, you're right down the street from, from our studio here at the Senesta. But the scope of your work as far as the areas, it sounds like are, are you mostly Metro Atlanta or are you spread throughout the state? We will do work anywhere in the state of Georgia. Um, we also and you have to be licensed for all that. So you can't just go into a, another state and do some work, can you? No, you have to be licensed yeah. for different states, right. But we, we do everything in the state of Georgia. We have licenses. We can do work in probably 30 of the 50 states right now. Um, and uh, we also have recently opened up a uh, small satellite office over in Charleston, South Carolina, and are doing a uh, hotel there in Charleston on the waterfront. So, So – Titan Electric, South Carolina, or Titan Electric. Oh, no, that's not how. Okay. No, right. Titan Electric, Georgia. Okay. Mm -hmm. So satellite office, right? Yes, right. right. I'm just saying in the future. I don't know. Who knows what happens? And this was three years ago, so who knows what happens five years but, from now, But, you know, uh, you, you ask what kind of work and what kind of jobs. You know, we've done office buildings. We've done tenant build-outs. We've done medical work, uh, hospital work. Well, every place needs power. Right. right. Exactly. <laughs> And assisted it's different. Living, it, high end assisted living. We've done it. We've done a lot of different things, and our team that we've built at our office in in Atlanta, uh, the, the the senior management, we have done probably just about every kind of electrical project you can do at some point or another between data centers, hospitals, water treatment facilities, all, everything. So. Wendy, I'm going to go back to the service department just one more time. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the service department interviewer here. Thank I you. just have to. <laughs> um, so you had talked about uh, 14, 14 trucks, 14 service techs, 24 seven. Mm -hmm. I'm imagining that service uh, need. Obviously, it never goes away. So there's a I mean, you, you haven't stopped. I mean, there's a lot more to go there, right? There's a lot more opportunity for growth, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, Talk a little bit about, um, with, and I know you won't throw anybody under the bus, but the competition that you guys are going up against. I know in the residential, it's kind of the, oh, I'm, I got one person with a truck or whatever and doing the best I can. In the commercial sector, it is, I would imagine you guys, with your expertise and your scale and just kind of the, companies, the company behind you, that, that's, that differentiates you from a lot of your competition. Am I right in assuming that? That's correct. Okay, so most most of the competition you're finding is it is it kind of just small one two person operations or I mean you know how, how let me let you expand on that about how you would say why they should call you if they don't you know they should call you because they either don't have one or they just go to the 
they go to the they go to the web anytime something happens, but but they want to set up a relationship. Or do you find that a lot of commercial buildings, they just yeah, when something happens, we just go figure something out, or we had a number, but that person's gone out of business. Talk about you know, say some talk a little bit about it where people go, yeah, that's been my experience. I better call these people and set up a set up a relationship. We tried to recruit uh, the uh, service technicians that have extensive experience and. Um, we go we are members of different various networking organizations that put us in touch with people like the building engineers and then hospital engineers and um, there's even a uh, networking group that is management for the assisted living and nursing home facilities and what what we try to do is make ourselves known in the within those circles and because those building engineers that's the ones I'm most familiar with those guys will they're our the, they're our best advertisement. They will they um, you know get together and they talk about their experience with Titan Electric and say you know they had a guy that come came in here and knocked it out of the park, got us up and running, and it was no issue. So you need to call this person with Titan. You need to you know call them. Um, and we and so that's how that's how we get a lot of our work. And then just you know the handoff from the new construction um, getting in on the ground floor and we are the best I would say service option for those places because we know the building because we built it so hmm. I'm sold and, and I would think once you once you do a job and you do a great job is the referral market is right. so is so huge that mm-hmm. you're, you're you're always going to be in uh, as we get close to the end of the show I love the fact first of all thank you very much for joining us today it's it's and it's a Pleasure to meet you, John. It's great to see you again, Wendy. You. Uh, you know, John, I, we, we love hearing stories here on Business Radio X about people that start businesses and, and they grow them and they become successful. Here's someone that's been in the industry 30 years, uh, approached by some other gentlemen, you know, a handful of years ago, you know, three, four years later, doing $50 million for just the Georgia division, uh, a, a hugely successful story. Where do you see it going? How big is this going to become? Um, that's uh, that's that's kind of eyebrow. Wendy is waiting question. for your answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, w- we have goals uh, that we would like to get to, um, size-wise. Um, you know, in the next probably ten years, we might like to double the size we are now. Um, Something do, tells me you'll do that before ten years. Well, um, some strategic some strategic growth and. And thought out processes. Uh, people are uh, human capital is a uh, very big issue, mm-hmm. and um, we 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 have a training program. We do all these things, but the 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 seasoned electrician, the seasoned superintendents are very very hard to come by, and uh, and and rewarded for their time and, and what they've done. Yeah. Uh, the average age of the electrician in the city of Atlanta, I think the last statistic I saw was uh, late 40s, early 50s. Wow. Um, wow. So we have really tried to push getting more young kids into yeah. the trades. And it's, you know, it, it, it's like that with all trades. It's sure. not just electrical. But um, we we really trying to push that. And if we can push that growth, we can get help our, help our company grow to the size we need to grow to. You know, everybody listening to this show who's a parent and has children in school, um, you know, I, I just my, I've, I've got three boys. One's already graduated from high school. Two are still in high school. You know, when they have the college fairs, I wish they would have trade fairs. I wish they would allow solid employers who can teach a, a valuable skill like electrical work, like general contract, like all that. Have it be a different fair or have it be the same night. But above and beyond, remember, Stephen, when we were in school, we had industrial arts exactly. class. Well, we, that, I actually learned how to weld in class. Right, they, right. they don't have that anymore. Well, that's that's that costs a lot of money. There is nothing wrong with having a trade fair, showing an apprentice, yeah. you know, kids looking for summer jobs between their junior, senior year, after their senior year, do a summer working with a an HVAC company, one of these companies, and just learn the basics of the skill because the right person is going to go, I like this. I, I enjoy, I, I'm good at this. I was not that person, but I had friends. Uh, but not everybody wants to, yeah, not everybody wants to be in front of a computer yeah, exactly. in an office all day long. They want to be out there using their hands. We, we are seeing 
guys. We we are seeing more schools starting to do it. Good, again, and good, which is yeah. a good thing. Well, Gwinnett good. Tech has really Gwinnett Tech grown in the last lot, several right. years. Uh, mm-hmm. so Gwinnett Tech's done some, uh, you know, but there are a lot of high schools that are starting to have in some of the outer line counties. What would I have seen? Yeah, uh, some of the more outer line counties of Metro Atlanta Hall. Um, had, for instance, has uh, very active classes and in, in of those nature for, for their students. But you know, a kid comes out of high school and wants to go on the trade. He can start out at fifteen to sixteen dollars an hour, making thirty thousand dollars a year, if not more, with overtime. And at the end of a five, four, uh, excuse me, a four-year apprenticeship, he can be making fifty-five, sixty thousand. Mm-hmm with zero debt uh, no college loans no anything you know and 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 a skill that is absolutely necessary and will right. never go away exactly. right and mm-hmm. and keep learning from it so I, I i you know listen any parents if you're if your children if your children are not getting exposed to that in your school go ask your go ask your school leaders to to do something and you know call us we'll get you get you in touch with titan electric george and see if they can you know come and Drop a few flyers off at least, if not have somebody kind of talk about what they do. I mean, I, I, anyway. Well, for Wendy, those- Wendy and I have talked at several schools, and, and we've gone and visited several schools and, and, and trying to help promote that. We can so. always do more, right? Oh, I, like, yes, and I like that they're doing some stuff. And, and I, I'm guessing they're saying, well, write us a check, and we'd be happy to do that. <laughs> yeah. John won't say anything. but John's not saying anything. Yeah. He gave me the wink. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what I was thinking. I mean, these schools are happy to, but again, it, it, everything comes down well, to money. But, and, and, but see, okay, so that's what the colleges do for the college fair. I get it, right? We, I mean, we all know that's kind of what happens. But We could go off on a whole roundtable yeah. discussion uh, yeah, yeah, right yeah. now yeah, yeah. about the schools <laughs> and the training and everything. But for those listening that would like to get into the field or work for a great company with a great culture or those general contractors out there that would like to talk to you, uh, Wendy, what's the best way to find out more about Titan Electric at Georgia? Our uh, website is www.titanelectric-ga.com. Titanelectric-ga.com. Not underscore, dash. There is a difference. I See, why'd you have to say underscore? Now you get underscore. No, no, it's minds. dash. It's dash. It's dash. A, well, you know, I'm the slightly annoying co-host. I have to live up to my gimmick, Mike. Well, well done. <laughs> uh, John, thank you again for joining us. Wendy, great to see you. Please promise us the next time you have any event and you bring the varsity truck that you'll call Amanda, myself, and Steven. Absolutely. We Steven missed out last time. And, <laughs> and, you know, well, I've got my day job I have to go to, so I wasn't here that day. <laughs> You'd find time. I, well, if you told me the varsity was here, yeah. I'd stop whatever I'm doing, <laughs> you know, and I'd come and make sure, so... Uh, Mike, before we uh, close out the show, I just want to uh, thank one of our sponsors, 101 Bagel Cafe in downtown Duluth, offers boiled and baked New York style bagels and iced coffee served on tap with their signature eye cubes. Uh, that's with a Z at the end. They quote, go beyond the bagel, end quote, offering lunch, baked treats, and catering. The welcoming cafe is perfect to gather for games or private events. Visit 101bagelcafe.com and also. Franchising opportunities are also available. And thank you, Amanda, for bringing in some goodies this morning from 101 Bagel I Cafe. I have been so disciplined. I have not eaten my chocolate chip muffin the entire you started show. On it, I started before the show. I did not eat during the show. That would be rude to our guests. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Steve, and thank you, Amanda. I want to remind you that you can listen to the show anytime by going to businessradiox.com, selecting Gwinnett Business Radio. Uh, we are the Gwinnett Studio, of course. You'll see about what 20 something studios now uh popped up across the country but we are the gwinnett studio this show is also available on your favorite podcast app itunes iHeartRadio, stitcher spotify it's it's all out there we're the best studio we well we are the best of all the studios and be sure to follow us on uh, social media facebook instagram twitter and linkedin at gwinnett radio x for the entire team i'm mike and we'll see you next time here on business radio x